The views, opinions, and representations expressed on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network and its website are those of the hosts, guests, and participants, and are not necessarily those of or endorsed by the network, its affiliated stations and broadcasts, the management, other hosts, or advertisers of the network. The shows found on the Night Dreams Talk Radio Network can, but do not necessarily, promote any particular lifestyle, belief, religion, political affiliation, or other personal practice. These shows are for entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to treat, diagnose, and or claim any cure of disease or condition, or give any medical or legal advice. You are listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio Network, from our compound to you worldwide, with your host, Gary Anderson. Well, that is me. I hope everybody's having a great week. Boy, the week is going fast. It's Thursday. Well, tonight, you better get yourself a cup of Jabba, get yourself a nice comfy chair, and sit back and listen to what we're going to be talking about tonight with Andrew and Julia. And we're going to be talking about two great books. One is called Southwest UFO Triangle Theory. The other one is Alien Park Dunes. They'll be on right after this. You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio, and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. Well, every, I hope we got everybody on here. We should have Andy, Andy and uh, Julia on the lines. Are you guys there? Hello, Gary. This Hi, is Gary. Andy well, I hope you guys are having a good week. I'm sorry about the mix up here today because uh, <laughs> it would have been an interesting show. I would have had a talk for an hour by myself. Oh my gosh! Yeah, good thing you caught us. Uh, we <laughs> we thought we we're going to be on tomorrow night, but uh, here we are. We're we're ready and uh, we're on. So, uh, how are you? I am doing good. Other than I had the flu for two weeks, I am never going to get another flu shot. Because the doctor said, hey, now since I'm a senior citizen, you need the senior citizen flu shot. He said, then you won't get the flu. Guess what? About four months later, I got the flu. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that. I, they talked me into the flu shot as well. That was a couple months ago. And luckily, uh, no, nothing, nothing's happened. But I'm, I'm sorry you got it. It's no fun. Well, I'll tell you, I've had the flu before. Every, You know, my daughter and one of my other kids had the flu here. They had it for three or four days. I had it two weeks. I have never had the flu for two weeks plus. So I don't know if it had anything to do with the flu shot. I don't know. But I'll tell you, I'm never going to get another one. Oh, man. Two weeks? That's that's no fun. In bed the whole time or what? Well, pretty much, yeah. I did do, I tried doing the show, and I'll tell you, it was rather interesting. But I did pull it off, you know, about four days out of five. Anyway, guys. Uh, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourselves? Julie, you there? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm right here. Um, so we've, uh, been married for what, 24 years now. Uh, interesting ride as it started, uh, uh, back in 1995, uh, with a surprise and understanding that my husband was into ufology and I didn't know it until I married him. <laughs> that would be a surprise. Now, and I, I think if I remember right, tell me, because you guys were on the show once before, uh, he, he took you out somewhere for whatever, and then that's when he laid it on you? Oh, yeah. So uh, the, the fun thing was okay, that, uh, we're, we were... We're getting a real bad echo there all of a sudden. Um, okay. Okay, that's uh, fine Can now. you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh Geez, when did it happen? Um, we uh, started talking about a vacation to take to New Mexico. And I was all excited thinking, well, oh, great, we're going to do some shopping and get an air balloon ride. And, and my husband says, well, you know, that would be fun, too. But uh, I was thinking of going to the city called Roswell in New <laughs> Mexico and uh, checking out a crash site. What do you mean a crash site? Yeah, where aliens crashed. I'm like, are they still there now? <laughs> no, no, it happened in 1947. So I thought, well, that would be cool too. So that's uh, where he laid it on me, and uh, we ended up taking a, a trip out there. 
travel basically throughout all of New Mexico and just stopping into some really neat places like uh, Carlsbad Canyon. Um, but then going into Roswell, that was kind of a fun little episode in itself where uh, there was a supposed uh, crash site um, authored by Jim Ragsdale. And he had had his own view of what had happened as he was camping out in a mountainside called, uh, a campsite called uh, Boy Scout Mountain. And uh, with that, he wrote a book, did a video, um, and, you know, it came out later on in time. Of course, he had kept the secret for so long. We were intrigued and wanted to follow uh, Jim Ragsdale's path up to Boy Scout Mountain. So we decided to do that. We were going to do that the the next morning, we ended up uh, at a restaurant having some wonderful Tex-Mex, a couple of margaritas, watching the sunset. And I don't know why I got a little bee in my bonnet and I said, you know what? Let's go now. We can do it while the sun is setting. So we set out to go up to Boy Scout Mountain, which was an incredibly rough terrain. And, you know, the bad weather had hit it. Uh, so the road wasn't even a road anymore. It was ruts in the ground. We could only go so far in our four-wheel drive. And at that point, it's like, let's get out of the car and hike. And so we were hiking up Boy Scout Mountain, uh, following some of the the clues that Jim had left in his book, like uh, a campfire ring where there was uh, places where you could set up camp and tents and whatnot. We actually found a ring that looked very close to the picture that he had in his book. And we're like, we're close. We're, we, we're going to find this place. We're going to find where he viewed the crash site. It was so dark. And we were just stumbling all over the place. Couldn't even walk up this hill because the, the road was so bad. But we had done it. You know, we set out what we ventured it was, to it do. It was a very fun trip. And yeah. um Although we didn't find what we were looking for that evening, um, the drive back was certainly interesting uh, because uh, we we had been up since early morning traveling through New Mexico from Carlsbad through through around down past El Paso to Carlsbad Caverns and Roswell. So we've been driving almost eight hours, and and here we were up on Boy Scout Mountain around uh, now around 10 p.m. and we had to get back to Roswell and the road was crazy uh driving back two lane road out in the middle of the desert and nothing but uh all kinds of wildlife out there we had uh we had owls we had rabbits we had deer we had skunk, deer we had squirrels <laughs> it was uh it, I had to do everything I could not to run over something on the way back and uh, we didn't we didn't actually get to the hotel till about 1 a.m., so that was a, a very long day. It, it was an exciting trip out there, uh, but it was something else for a road trip. Oh, yeah, but how come you, you were so excited to see it, but why didn't you wait to the daylight to go do it? I just, I got, I just well, wanted I to go now. <laughs> she wanted to go right now, Gary, and, you know... Um, I just wasn't in the mood to say absolutely no. We were we were on vacation having a good time, and I, I said, oh, what the heck, why don't we go do it? <laughs> so we did, but it, it, we had fun the second day. We went out to, to the debris site out south of uh, Corona, New Mexico, uh-huh. and uh, we spent some time out in that area. So that that was a fun trip. We, 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 we had a good time. We took a lot of pictures, and... Uh, that trip actually launched us into doing uh, our own ufology research afterwards, which took us down a whole nother path that we can talk about more here as we go along. But uh, it, it was a great trip, and uh, someday we'll, we'll write just about that four-day trip, I think, all the fun we had just doing it. Well, it sounds like you guys had, but now I, I'm going to ask you a question. You know, you, the crash site, you know, they, they first announced it was a UFO and then quickly the next morning said it was a weather balloon with, you know, test dummies basically in it. But I, I always amazed because I've seen the area in photos when, you know, whatever crash took out a whole bunch of trees came, you know, went a long distance before it came to rest against, you know, all those huge, uh, boulders and stuff like that how could a weather balloon do something like that i can't see it 
Well, there there were two locations, and uh, one the first one's the debris site, which was out by the ranch area south of uh, Corona, and and that area from from the books and research, um, it was a, it was a wide and long area of debris. There was actually possibly a gouge in the ground where something may have bounced off the ground, and um, it, it, it was just open desert, more or less. And the actual uh, trees and rocks and what have you was some 30 miles away on Boy Scout Mountain. So there was a debris site where there must have been an explosion. And then uh, the craft continued flying. And then Jim Ragsdale camping out on Boy Scout Mountain saw it crash into the mountainside where the trees and rocks were. And not too many uh, researchers have photographs of that area um, on the hillside. Actually, it was just in the Jim Ragsdale storybook produced by the Roswell UFO Museum in 1996 that showed photographs of that area. So everyone else was showing photographs of the desert, and this one book showed it up on the mountain. So that's – but now – you're going to find other uh, investigators stating and believing that the UFO crash, the end crash didn't happen on the mountain. It happened still out in the desert. So debris site in the desert, crash site in the desert. So uh, a little confusing. Was there two UFOs that crashed uh, in similar times within a week or days? Did they crash into each other? Um that I don't think we'll ever know. Uh, just maybe the government knows that. Yeah, or two weather balloons crashed. And I, you know, even, you know, <laughs> the, I, I've seen pictures of the area. I've seen, you know, a lot of, you know, stuff on it. No way a weather balloon could have done any of that. And and to think that the people are gullible, you know, and it's, just, it's the whole thing, you know, I hate to say it, it smells like conspiracy from the government. Because, you know, everything from the undertaker, the sheriff, the fire, uh, fire chief, and, you know, other witnesses, it, it, it saw the craft and saw the, the area before the military got there. And, you know, and what they had to go through, you know, after the, they got visited by government officials at their house. So if a weather balloon crashed and did all that, uh, well, I don't know any weather balloon that would have done that. Hmm. Mm. Pretty powerful weather balloon, actually. You know. Yeah, really. Probably, yeah, probably like a blimp. Its own, uh... 